so good morning or oh, good night. So it depends where you are. So I think is uh, today we really have honor to have Professor Pan Hui to talk this uh, hot topic called the metaverse. So you read the news, right? So is the Facebook change the name to Meta, and all these kind of big company like Microsoft is also moving into this kind of metaverse. So you may wonder what is a metaverse. I think uh, Professor Pan Hui work on this augmented reality and mobile computing for many years. And recently he just finished a survey. And this survey is more than 60 pages and received this multiple news media coverage. And also very interesting, this, this time in the, his interviewed by Ming Bao. And in the past, right, so in the internet, so no one know you are a dog. But the professor Pan Hui said in the metaverse, you can be a cat. So I think I really like this quotation. So I think it's less, uh, I think it's a uh, Pan Hui is, uh, yeah, is also a very, I mean, a distinguished scholar. So I think it's a IEEE fellow, is a member of uh, European Academy of, uh, European Academy of Arts, of Science. I think it's, uh, yeah, so let's welcome Professor Pan Hui to give this very interesting talk. Okay. Yeah, so thank you. Thanks, uh, Professor Chi for the introduction and also uh, thanks, uh, Professor Ni for the suggestion on having this uh, webinar. It's, uh, yeah, it's my pleasure to talk to you today about uh, our work on the, uh, uh, this uh, metaverse. So, uh, yeah, so the, the long name, uh, we have a very long name for the paper, but uh, yeah, I'm going to, uh, but for the slide, I just put a very short name, which is the the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Metaverse. Yeah, so it, it little bit sounds like a cyberpunk, but you know, the, also the photo is a bit also like cyberpunk, but it's actually cyberpunk. Okay, so this uh, title actually is from the book, uh, Science Fiction Book, uh, published in uh, 1970, uh, was in, inspired by this book published in 1979, it's called the Hitchhiker's, Guide, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So it's, uh, and basically, it's a pretty, uh, you know, a classic uh, science fiction book. It talk about that the Earth was actually a computer and was, uh, and the mice are the most uh, smartest, uh, you know, uh, uh, creatures. So actually, the aliens use the Earth as a computer to do simulations, and then, but then, uh, some days that the mice they destroy this Earth, and then this last man who, uh, you know, who got saved and then traveled by alien to the different part of the galaxy. Is actually uh, a science principle. And the last, so this is actually of course the starting of the uh, book. And then the last sentence is, you know, they still, uh, you know, think digital watch are a pretty neat idea, right? So maybe uh, we can replace the digital watch with uh, maybe smartphone or something else. But uh, yeah, we've got this uh, uh, inspiration for the title. So uh, yeah, so let me start. I have uh, uh, one around uh, almost one hour to 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 present uh, no, yeah. to present this topic and uh, let's see. So I and then let me get start. So this uh, uh, this survey paper, as Professor Xu mentioned, actually the mm -hmm. full title is "All One Need to Know About Metaverse." Mm -hmm. So we I mean, aim to be a, a complete survey on uh, on technology singularity well, maybe, maybe. virtual. That was, that was I'm Sorry, I'm trying to mute some. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, virtual economic and the uh, some research agenda, right? So this paper we put in uh, research scale and archive uh, last month. So so far like uh, six weeks, and today I saw that you have already uh, over ten thousand uh, read. So basically, uh, ten thousand different IP address have been uh, uh, download and read this paper. So it's pretty good that we got, or uh, you know, over. Uh, 1,600 people every week since the article was published uh, online, and then the, uh, we also have a very short video clip on the uh, you know on some of these uh, on online and that just video clip is only one minute and then the also uh, got pretty uh, quite many uh, view already. So it seems that yeah, as uh, Professor Ani said, this topic is very uh, popular, and thanks to all of you have been uh, read this paper. And so the talk, uh, my talk today is going to, I, I have uh, a metaverse. Ben, I think you, um, you mute all uh, except yourself. So you are the host, you can do this. Ah, okay. So I can mute all. Uh,
Okay, I don't, uh, let me. Okay, let me. Oh, okay. Okay, so I have uh, mute all. So uh, yeah, thanks for the, uh, sorry for the interruption by the, some of these uh, audience. So my, uh, I have today have over 160 slides and I don't think I can uh, present them uh, enough. I can finish all the slides. So I have actually put the slide online and actually you, I even have a Chinese version of the slide that you can download them. So you can have this, uh, you can scan the QR code on the screen. So basically you have the, the on the left, we have the Chinese uh, version of the slide and on the, on the right have the uh, English version of slide. So you want to get them, you just, um, especially the, the you are more familiar reading Chinese, we have the, uh, the Chinese version, you just uh, use your phone to scan the QR code uh, and then you can, you can, you can download this, uh, the, uh, this slide to your to, to your phone or to your computer, and of course we can also share them uh, after the talk as well. To to uh, if you are interested in uh, you know getting the slide, okay. So that the uh, that me got started. So what is the metaverse? So the uh, metaverse, the word, the, this this keyword right actually from this uh, science fiction book Snow Crash, which was uh, written by uh, you know uh, Neil Stephenson. So one of the very uh, well-known uh, science fiction writer. So you have write, uh, you know, quite uh, many uh, number of uh, science fiction book. So his style is more kind of cyberpunk. So it's one of these uh, actually snow quest. Uh, you know, we talk about this war that people can, you know, uh, you know, live inside the uh, this uh, virtual world called metaverse. It's a bit similar to the, you know, this Ready Player One, if you have actually watched this movie, but that time it was 1992, right? So uh, this book actually was the first, so my PhD advisor, he liked reading books. So he always carry maybe three or four books with him. And actually the Snow Crash was the first book he, he gave it to me to read. He said, you know, I start my PhD, he said, okay, yeah, this is interesting book. Uh, they were uh, interesting to uh, knowing some of this virtual world that I give you this book to read. And uh, so then, uh, yeah, so, so I then read it uh, quite almost 20 years ago. So in the metaverse, right, all individual users on their respective avatar. So everyone have an avatar, which is like uh, the, the analogy to the user's physical self, right? So, uh, so each one, even you live very poor life, you know, you can experience an alternative life in the virtual uh, virtuality, which is a metaphor of the user's real world, okay? And then as Professor Chi also mentioned that, you know, uh, we have a light, always like to show this picture these days. So basically on the internet, not at the beginning of the internet, we say on the, the, you know, this newer car picture is that on the internet, nobody know that you are, cat, you are a dog. Like then uh, we are using this, another picture we say in the metaverse, anyone can be a cat, right? So actually this is my cat and uh, it's a real cat. It's not a meta cat. Although I have changed his name to meta kitty. Up to the matter. Okay, so there's uh, we start with the the uh, the, uh, the basic concept about reality and virtual reality, right? So, so you you can see from this figure, so this picture, so we have the the reality which is on the left, so it's the physical world, physical reality, which is are the physical world that we can see, and then on the right is the virtual uh, virtual reality, basically. The, in the virtual world. So when you wear the, your headset, you don't see the reality, you only see the virtual world, right? So you can go directly from Hong Kong to Tokyo or, you know, or Rome and instantly when you enter this virtual world, right? So augmented reality is in between, right? So it's between the, the physical and the virtual. So you can see the virtual object, which is appear in the real world. So basically one criteria about uh, augmented reality is that you have to merge the virtual and the physical world, okay? So you can see that the, uh, we, you know, for, for AR, VR research, we, we call this reality virtuality continuum. So basically you move from the, the, the lab to the right and you change the level of the, the virtual uh, reality, the, 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 you know, the virtuality, okay? But there's something actually uh, doesn't change, right? For example, that 
I, you know, the CMA is hiring Professor Postdoc, PhD student to build the metaverse. So you have been the same for physical, uh, the reality and also virtual reality and augmented reality. Yeah. So we are hiring people to, uh, yeah, to build the metaverse. Okay, then for metaverse, there are also the three phase, right? So then, which is the slightly different. Uh, so people may ask, you know, what is different between metaverse and AR and VR, right? So it's pretty simple. So AR, VR are technologies, okay? And metaverse are the, uh, you know, it can be a system of vision or, you know, uh, utopia or dystopia, which is, uh, uh, you know, enabled by the technology. So they are different things, okay? So how to uh, build this metaverse, right? You say that you can have like three phases, okay? So the first one is the digital twin, okay? So I will go more detail. And then you have the digital twin. So basically it is the mapping or the model of the physical world, okay? You, so you have the twin of your physical world in the, in the digital world, okay? So this is a, a one step, right? So this is pre, you know, pretty primitive step. So basically you just model your, your physical world, but you know, have the exchange of information between the uh, between uh, uh, them. So they're tied by the data, okay? And then you have the digital native, so it's a bit more advanced. So basically the avatar in the metaverse, they create their contents and the content can uh, live in the metaverse without uh, an entity in the, in, the, uh, in the physical world, okay? So it's kind of, you know, uh, uh, the avatar or the AI or the or even the, the human creators, you know, the artists, they can create their digital or content in the uh, virtual in the metaverse, and then the content will be uh, archived or stay there, so it's uh, become a, a access in this uh, in the metaverse. And then the the third one, right? Okay, so we are this the you know, coexistence of physical and virtual reality. Basically, we call it we call it you know uh, you know uh, surreality. Basically, you know, you cannot tell at this time, you cannot tell what is real and what is not, not real. Basically, you may see some uh, some kind of virtual object or your daily life. So you can see that, you know, a panda is dancing on the podium of HKUST. And then you can get another instant, you go into a totally virtual world. And then maybe the virtual object coming to your real world with the AR, right? So this, you know, is kind of a, a status which we call it the, uh, Sorority, uh, okay. So how to uh, build the metaverse? Like people will be interested in how actually we build it. So you can see that uh, the physical wall is like this is a picture of Hong Kong. Uh, it's the physical wall, although this picture. Then we have the digital twin. So basically, you can build a model of the Hong Kong uh, in the uh, digital one. But then you know you can see the kind of one to one mapping one building is mapping to another uh, one building uh, model in the uh, in in the uh, digital twins right and the metaverse you can see that as i described that is a bit different it's not only the one to one mapping anymore you can see a lot of virtual things in your world which is that are not supposed to happen here like the, that this uh, ship is flying uh, a lot of uh, scream is this pain on the street that you are working right so this can be the the, uh, the, 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 the one that you are, yeah, that you are using. Uh, okay, so then how to, uh, so the digital clean, uh, I have described that, you know, it's a large scale and high fidelity digital model and entity. So it, you know, it's duplicated in the virtual environment, right? Then uh, the digital twin, it, we have to refer some of these physical uh, counterpart with the, property. So it's not, uh, it's not just a one-to-one -one mapping of, you know, for example, a, 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 a brick from one building and then you have another brick in this uh, virtual, uh, the digital twin, right? So it's more kind of you are, you have, you're capturing the sum of the properties that you need about this physical object and then you, you, you model those property in the, in the virtual world. So it can be, you know, you can, um, you, a building or a person may have um, different uh, uh, digital twin depending on the application that, you know, you're going to solve it. It's a healthcare application that maybe they are more, uh, you know, interested into all your biological signals, okay. And then the content creation part is like, uh, is more about to deal with the, the native, uh, the, the digital native. So then the, uh, so there will be a uh, digital uh, creation, which can be uh, at this stage, it can be distinguished from the physical counterpart and even only exist in the digital world, okay? And then uh, then the uh, metaverse, we expect it to be exist as a self 
sustaining. So basically it can be self-sustained, even the human wall got destroyed, but it can still uh, self-sustain. It can be a persistence and at some kind of high level of dependence, independence, okay. And uh, and the avatar, right, the, which can be the users or the human users, right, uh, in the real, the, the physical world, they can experience some kind of heterogeneous activity in real time, okay. Uh, theoretically, the metaverse is able to support unlimited number of concurrent users in a number of virtual world, okay. But this is theoretically, and it's very difficult to achieve. You know, if you are uh, later, I can introduce more uh, more technical difficulty because it's very difficult to to build a, a wall to support you know uh, unlimited number of users, right? You you need a lot of computational power and you need a lot of energy, right? So, uh, but you know, in theoretically, it can we can do this. So where are we now? So this uh, show you the metaverse uh, chronicle. So basically, it talk about the history of you know the invention of the uh, of this uh, metaverse and uh, the, uh, the so we can say that the metaverse has experienced for transition, right? If, if from you know really depend on the technology which emerge at the time. So you know when new technology comes, then you have enable more functionality in the computing world. So 74, there was books, you know, uh, probably actually even earlier than 74, but you know, this uh, at least from 74, there was already some book about mentioning the concept about the metaverse. And then when it comes with the, you know, uh, the computers, personal computer and computer graphic, right? Then we have the test-based interaction game. So which happened in the, the, end, uh, the late 80s and uh, early 90s, okay? So because of this personal computer. And there's no cash book coming in 1992. And then you have the uh, more technology coming, for example, the massive internet usage in the uh, mid nineties and then touch screen smartphone also become available in the 20, uh, 2000s and then 2010, you know, uh, 11, there's a cryptocurrency that actually enable, we have another phase uh, of, of transition. So we have this uh, virtual world and massive uh, multiplayer online game. Okay, MMOG. And then, uh, you know, perhaps you will remember maybe five, six years ago, Google had the Google Glass and then Apple, uh, and then, uh, you know, Microsoft had the HoloLens release and then Oculus, uh, HTC, uh, you know, a headset. Then it enabled also some other uh, application, uh, AR application like Pokemon Go, right? I, 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 you know, I believe that many of you have been, uh, Paying a pay before, or you know, you, you know what is Pokemon Go, and then there's also VR chat that allow you to to chat with others in a virtual, uh, you know, with your avatar. And more recently, we with you know, people call 2021 as the the first year of this uh, metaverse, right? So because recently actually there's a lot of uh, artists or people they are doing you know NF, uh, NFT, right? So that's have. Crypto kitties and alien world. So basically, you 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 know you can you know build your you know a virtual pets and then you you know sell them with a lot of money. So you know you can see that uh, the technology involved actually it, it you know so basically this technology serve as the catalyst to and uh, to drive such a transition. Okay. And I would say that nowadays the research community is still on the way to exploring the metaverse development. So we are actually pretty uh, beginning. Uh, some technology are already are there, but we can still we are still uh, trying to explore what we can do. And you know, uh, but the new technology, you know, ideally the new technology can potentially unlock additional feature to the metaverse and then drive the virtual environment towards a more perceived virtual universe. So this is where we are now. And uh, this actually a pretty nice uh, picture. I like it, it summarizes actually our space of research uh, that we can do about Metaverse. So we can see that the SSS so you the richness of the content. Okay, so the, the, the richness of content means from simple text, right? So it's SMS and then you have the image and have the and then you have audio, video, gaming, virtual CD, VR, MR, AR, and the physical, right? So you can see the, the richness of the content. It move, you move the, the SSS, uh, you know, toward the, uh, the, 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 you know, the other side, right? The, you know, then you change the, the content richness. 
And then the, the Y axis actually is about the, also about your personal personalization, uh, user engagement in this activity, okay? So uh, at the beginning is a read and write. So basically tell you that you, you can read your test messages and write your test message. It does not involve so much, you know, uh, uh, you know, users uh, experience over there, right? So, you know, you just, you have a camera, take a photo and then, you know, delete a photo, right? So it's kind of, you know, uh, you know, not any unique experience that you can gain, but then you can go up, right? So then things got per more personalized, right? So you have the personalization, basically like Netflix, like the Spotify as made tool, right? So you have some more personalized. Is also the Fortnite, so it's one of these pretty uh, uh, popular, popular uh, uh, you know uh, metaverse game that you can create your your virtual wall, uh, virtual uh, you know uh, objects over there, a location, and then you you know people pay with the, their avatar. But then uh, it doesn't allow, and then you know we go even up, uh, they then en enable that content creation that you can create your content, right? Basically, the YouTube is more. Uh, have a more richness in users' experience because it allowed the users to generate the content, right? It's not only like Netflix, Netflix is uh, produced, right? But then the uh, community, so also as a community part in YouTube is not as strong, uh, not as strong as uh, TikTok. TikTok always also allow you to to generate content, but you have more, you know, uh, kind of community engagement. So you can see that the, you know, you, you got different kind of uh, more and more uh, engagement over there. So our metaverse space is up here. So it, we expect you have to support more durity and more potential, okay? So the durity is that uh, we would expect to see there's more merge of the physical and the virtual world, okay? So the, uh, the, the, the there will be more engagement in this aspect. And digital object, we also expect to be more perpetual. So basically perpetual means they're permanent. So basically the artists, they create their content on the virtual, on the metaverse, right? So how the, 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 this content can be archived, for example, they we expect some of the content also stay, stay in the metaverse forever, for example, right? So um, actually on Friday, uh, on Monday, we have the discussion, I have a, a short presentation about uh, to a group of artist and historian about his metaverse. And the historian, uh, uh, you know, asked the question about, you know, how do you actually archive, you know, there is the, the digital, uh, you know, art, you know, or digital uh, things in the metaverse. So, so who is responsible for archiving them? Uh, who is the job to make, make sure that those uh, digital content will be, uh, you know, preserved, right? So those things actually we, is the space for, for all of the opportunity to enter the metaverse. Okay, uh, let me continue. Then our vision about the technology and ecosystem. Okay, so I, so uh, so there are, there you know you, I saw you here. So there's uh, pillars of technology and also the pillars of metaverse system. So the you can see that the lower part there are the eight pillars of metaverse technology enabled. So basically, the technology which enable the metaverse. Right? As I just mentioned that the AR, VR, they are the technology, right? But the metaverse, they are just the outcome of this technology. But then even you have the metaverse, then still some, something, you know, to maintain some other technology. So you, to maintain, to run the ecosystem, right? But from the hard technology, enabled technology, you can see that I put network here as cloud computing, AI, computer vision, blockchains, robotics, IoT, user interactivity and extended basically AR, VR and MR. So they are the uh, technology over there. So we need all this technology to really enable, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, SnowQuest kind of, you know, a uh, version of uh, Metaverse at least, right? But even if the technology are all there and you build something, but in order for your system, for your Metaverse to sustain, always talk about sustainability, uh, sustainable, you know, thing, right? So then you still need some other th uh, technology which uh, to maintain the ecosystem. Then we have, we need, you know, technology for the avatar, uh, the content creations, basically uh, the virtual economics. So the virtual economy, you, uh, you heard, you read the news these days by JP Morgan, uh, sorry, Morgan Stanley. Morgan Stanley say that the metaverse economy is 8 trillion US dollar. So eight trillion is, you know, of course, you know, 
the invest, uh, investment banker may, you know, may up a little bit about the, the number, but, you know, it's still, you know, it, it's this big economic uh, going there. And so how we make sure that the economic, uh, you know, is not monopolized or, or you know, or, or just dominated by the few, uh, you know, payers in this system, right? How we manage the of this. And then there's also social acceptability, right? How, how what is social acceptability, right? You're wearing a huge uh, headset, goggle, and walk on the street like a Terminator. Is it socially acceptable or not, right? And security privacy, so, you know, the security will, uh, privacy will get even more uh, compared to the online gaming because of, you know, you're wearing your headset. And actually they have all your uh, bio vital, right? Uh, like your, they're checking your eyes, you have your face recognition. And so all your biometrical information can be stored in the, in the metaverse. So how, we, how you actually uh, can make sure that all these are safely uh, stored, right? And then also trust. How can we maintain trust? How can you trust the avatar? Right, so those things are, are pretty uh, uh, important research uh, issues as well, right? And so you can see that uh, for the small items over there, so those are actually the future words that I, uh, I, I'm not supposed to show this one now, but you know, I just saw in you and then there's some, uh, I'm gonna show it later as well. So these are the future research issues, uh, each area that we need to solve, you know, due to enable uh, a sustainable, uh, Metaverse. Okay, so as a as a computer scientist, we like to put things in step, right? Protocol step. We we like to put things uh, as a step, so we can say that what are the dependency over there, right? So I put these pillars as a more kind of step over here, so you can see that the metaverse is in the on the middle. Okay, so and it depends on the technology below below itself. So basically, you can see that the user interactivity, the extended reality. And then computer vision, AI, robotics, edge, network, and hardware infrastructure. Of course, you need the hardware infrastructure. So these are the technology enable, enabler. And then these are the ecosystem, uh, which is on top of the metaverse. Okay. So the uh, you can also see that we also put the user interactivity and extended reality, which is on top of the others, like uh, other technology. So because they, we believe that uh, this extended reality and user interactivity, they also depend on the, uh, you know, the other more basic technology like computer vision, edge and cloud, right? And you can see here is that uh, we say that under this, uh, this technology aspect, right, that the human users can assess the metaverse through uh, extended reality. So basically the extended reality is the, the, the gateway for you to enter the metaverse, okay? So you put on your uh, uh, your headset, you or and uh, then you or, or just pull your smartphone and then you enter the metaverse. So it's the gateway for you to to enter metaverse. The use the user interactivity is is the way for you to interact with the virtual content, okay? So it allow you to interact with the the uh, virtual objects in the in these uh, in the metaverse, okay? And then the next, the computer vision, the AI and the robotic, they can work with the user to handle various uh, activity inside the metaverse for the uh, use for the uh, user interactivity and the uh, extended realities. So basically the, they are, uh, they are, you know, above, the, they, are, they enable these uh, use interactivity and the, the, the SR, but they also depend on the lower technology like edge, and network, right? So, uh, so edge computing, you know, the aim is to provide improve the performance application. So I will show later as well that you know some of the application can be quite heavy, like computer vision, uh, AI. They are, can be very heavy and not possible to run directly on the your headset. You know, there's there's a, a dilemma here, right? The dilemma is that you, uh, as Mark Zuckerberg also mentioned, that he wants to reduce the cost of the headset. Right. So, you know, if the uh, Oculus can reduce the cost to 200 US dollars, then, you know, probably uh, it can reach uh, 10 million users quickly, right? But you re when you reduce in the cost, basically it also means that your capability of the device will have to be also kind of sacrificed, right? So then the computational power will also be lower. So actually then the, the you know, 
it may not be able to uh, you know process a lot of complex uh, calculation. So you have to use the edge you know or the cloud to help to to do the computation, right? And uh, so we we say that you need to leverage. Uh, uh, Okay, so leverage both the cloud-based edge-based service, we can add, uh, achieve a better um, uh, performance of the uh, application and uh, enhance the user experience, okay? And then you have everything about the network as well, that you also need the network to support low latency, uh, you know, uh, delivery. So latency, later I show you the latency is also super important, you know, if the latency is too high, they actually uh, in the VR environment, right? If the latency is too high, actually you have the, sickness. So basically you may feel uh, sick, you may vomit, you know, so it, it happened just uh, the latency already can, uh, you know, can cause a lot of issues, right? So it's uh, playing an important role. And then for the social, all these things I already mentioned. So basically the ecosystem, you know, if you want to have an independence and matters size virtual world, you need all these things. You need all these uh, items or modules you need to research, do research on all these aspects to make sure that your metaverse can be sustainable. Otherwise, you know, it may just fall, you know, uh, the technology, even you have the technology, but you will not stay long. Okay. Or there's or actually, uh, we, you know, even you not stay long, it's not a, a, a huge issue, but the huge issue is that it may actually cause a lot of harm if we don't uh, do things right. Okay. So for instance, right, the, uh, uh, you know, the uh, production in the virtual economics should be protected by the ownership, right? Otherwise, the uh, how the artists or creators is going to sustain their living there, right? So you have to be protected by some ownership, right? While such product should be also accepted by other avatar, right? So basically, it's talk about the social acceptability issues as well. So you know, you make something, you have to be also social acceptable to the people, okay? And then also these uh, privacy risk and security facts that are also very important. So here, and again, you can see that the, uh, there's more items here that if you are interested in looking at these up, all the aspects that we need to research on, right? That, you know, that you, you, you need, we can do research on the, all these aspects. Okay, but I'm not going, uh, I, I got more detail. So, uh, so since now I only have around uh, half an hour, so let me quickly uh, go through some of the slides. So I, then the uh, you know I just follow the, uh, the you know the the protocol step that and I first introduced the technology uh, and then I introduce if I still have time I introduce the ecosystem okay so the, the you do remember this protocol right so the, the step start from the user interactivity and the extended reality so I start with the extended reality so I have already showed you this uh, in previous slide about the reality and virtuality. Uh, so I'm not going uh, more detail uh, again. So the so virtual reality, if you have a, haven't pay uh, uh, this, you know, if you haven't used some of the headset, right? Probably you don't know actually. Uh, you can imagine, but you know, uh, you may not have some kind of personal experience. So uh, so basically, uh, the VR, you have the uh, you know the the totally synthetic view, right? So you don't see the the, the the real world, okay? So your view is totally synthetic. So you, 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 can, you can go instantly to another world, okay? So the commercial VR headset that there's quite a, quite a few popular one, like Oculus with, you know, now Microsoft, uh, Facebook or Meta, and then the HTC uh, uh, Vive, and then, you know, Samsung, they also have their, their quite pretty nice headset. But this, all these can also has have provide some usual way of user interaction technique, right? Including head checking or some tangible control controller, right? So you can see that this lady actually, she's uh, holding some of these uh, device versus the controller, you know, for you to control, to interact with this uh, object in the virtual uh, environment, okay? And this is the headset that you're wearing. You can see that it's not tra semi-transparency. So basically it's, you only see the uh, virtual object there. So users in the metaverse, they can create content, like align with their digital twin or not, right? So, I mean, they use their digital twin to create this content. And today, you know, the commercial virtual uh, environment actually enable the users to create uh, they are art, uh, art, uh, art world, right? For example, that you can see that this, this, uh, 
this artist is doing the virtual, the VR painting. So he does do the painting in the virtual environment that we, you know, you can see this uh, virtual, this, uh, you know, this, uh, this painting was actually uh, recorded in this uh, virtual world. And it also has also enabled uh, more kind of social, uh, it enable a virtual environment that you can collect with each other, right? That the artists, for example, you can see that on the right hand, on uh, the bottom one, that the, the couple artists, they are collaborating, uh, doing some uh, artwork together, right? So enable collaboration, okay? So it, it can be a virtual environment, we can, you know, it can give you a shared sense of space, share sense of presence, a share sense of time, okay? So you have basically means that you can have real-time interaction with other users, right? So it's a way to communicate. You can use the, the you know, a gesture, text, or voice so to, to communicate among each other. And you also provide a way to share information and manipulate the object, right? So for example, this, uh, this uh, controller, or a more advanced thing is that you can just use your gesture, right? They, they, this, uh, like this, uh, these guys here, they use their hand, the native you know, user interface, their hand to, to touch, to create some, uh, even do the painting, okay? And then you, you this is from the, uh, you know, uh, uh, Meta, right? Meta, there's the virtual meeting room kind of thing. So uh, especially for the pandemic, right? So people are get used to more, uh, more and more used to these uh, virtual meetings and uh, uh, things, right? And so this actually VR can provide a nice meeting environment for you to, you know, have uh, to interact with each other without some, you know, sensible latency. Okay, so this is VR. VR is you don't see the, the real world, right? In the AR, you can see that uh, you see both the real world. So you can hold your phone and then you point the phone to the street and you see the street itself, right? And you also see the Pokemon, uh, you know, showing up a street, right? So you, you have this uh, merge of the, 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 the real world and the virtual world, okay? So, uh, so in theory, the computer will generate the virtual content and then will be presented to you, right? And uh, so this virtual content, it doesn't necessarily to be just a, a, a pictures or image, like it can be actually also, it can be an image, it can be audio, it can even actually a smell of haptic. So depending on, you know, uh, the, uh, the, the output, right? So it, you, you can output smell as well, you know, if you, um, and you can give you some haptic uh, feedback. Okay, so in order to guarantee seamless and lightweight user in the essence with such digital entity, right, that uh, 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 is actually a challenge a problem that, you know, um, it will, you know, uh, I, will, I will talk more later about why it is so challenging to maintain this uh, lightweight in the essence. But then, uh, then uh, you know, you, you, you can see that, you know, uh, as a user, right, probably you don't want really to wear a lot of extra device to go uh, and carry them, work with you, you know, even with, uh, you know, this controller, right? It's, it's not very nice to carry them and walk around. So the free hand interaction technique, right, uh, as this, this pitted in most of this science fiction film, like, you know, like Tom Cruise here, the Minority Report, right? So it's uh, you know, actually it's a very nice ideal way we think to be the, uh, the interface for the user to interact with the, the, the uh, AR uh, contents, okay? So we, can, uh, so we can consider that in the metaverse, right? With the AR, we'll be integrated with our, our environments, uh, urban environments, and, you know, and the digital you know, entity will be appear in, uh, in a plan or probable way on top of the, you know, other digital uh, physical object in our urban areas. So then you can see a lot of different virtual things when you're working on the street. Of course, there are some challenge issues that, you know, this headset you can see is pretty big, right? That is, it may not be, uh, you may not really want to carry them uh, with you all the time, right? And then the China is also doing very well for making this headset, right? So these are the AR headsets, actually, they are all Chinese company. So uh, for some Pico and, and Rio, so those are, you know, are pretty, uh, not Panasonic, not, but they quite a few of these ITE, though, those are all uh, Chinese uh, brands. Uh, right, so there are some ch key challenges, for example, in AR, you know, for enable NR that you, you, you know, uh, usually the input, 
So uh, we talk about input and output, right? The input, I mentioned the output that can be the, the, the image can be, uh, you know, uh, audio, et cetera, et cetera, right? But the input usually are from the camera, okay? So of course it can also be from the microphone, but the camera usually the input to AI is the camera and then the camera, uh, the image coming or the video coming from the camera is going to pass two phase. One phase is called cognizance. So basically it's a cognizance about, it's about the understanding, okay? And then the second part is about the augmentation, right? So the cognition is about understanding, basically understanding about the environment, understanding what are in the environment, right? So that means that you need to use a lot of uh, technique like uh, computer vision technique, like, uh, you, know, uh, you know, object recognition or face recognition, right? So those parts are very heavy, okay? And the, red, the, the uh, augmentation part is lighter, basically you just, after the, the understanding, then you just retrieve those virtual content and render them in this, uh, in this real environment. Okay. And uh, I also heard quite many, some people ask about what is the, actually the uh, mixed reality, right? So uh, mixed reality and AR, VR, so what's the, the, the main difference? So there, there, there's some, uh, there's a lot of things. Some people say that the mixed reality is just, you know, augmented reality, there's no difference, right? And some people say, okay, there's some difference. It's a more, a, a stronger version of AR. So the traditional AR, you will see the virtual object, you can interact with them, right? But just some basic uh, operation. But the uh, mixed reality has to enable uh, better integration of the virtual and the real. So the one example is here is that, you know, you can see this uh, school drive, you know, the school in this uh, virtual world, right? But then you have a physical school driver. So, uh, and for the uh, mass reality, you can use the, the real school driver to, uh, to operate on the virtual school in the virtual world, right? So those, uh, you know, you get a better uh, favor of, uh, of merging this tool. Okay. And because you want to see whether we know with the, this uh, driver, school driver, before you really do it on your car, right? You can try to do it on the digital twin, okay? And do it on the digital twin, you know that, okay, this is the right drive, uh, school driver because the, uh, you know, is a slot head, so it's the correct one, okay? And then you, then you, can, you, can, you can move the virtual uh, object in the, uh, over there, okay? And besides all these, uh, these things, there's also display issues, there are, you know, what are the, you know, because you need to display this, uh, this object, right? So then there's, uh, there's also the recent uh, 10, 20 years, there's also a lot of advance in display technology. For example, you have this 3D display that probably you will see it also in Chengdu, right? So you have this uh, virtual display at the corner, which can do some nice 3D uh, display. And there's also the, some Pico display, basically you have the Pico projector in your phone, okay? Because, you know, uh, this is important that, uh, the, you know, some of the content that you can see from your, your headset, right? But then the others that they are not wearing headset, they cannot see them. So, but in, in order to share the experience, right? So you can share your, what you see with uh, this uh, virtual, uh, with these projectors. So, you know, you just turn on the projector on your, your phone, then will be projected over there, right? Uh, more advanced, as these are from two paper published this year. So they're more advanced than the hologram. So basically this uh, reflection hologram. So this, this is the, 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 the real object. And this is the object, the, 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 the darker one is the object which is created by hologram. So basically this is the hologram object. And the right one is actually another technology uh, or holographic display basically is using laser, plasma, laser so you can uh so you can see that this is a small small uh, uh you can see this uh, small dot here actually is a, a, a hologram uh, display and you can actually you can even have some feeling or touch uh, on that object because it's generated by plasma okay so this paint technology is getting uh more and more advanced as well that we know in, in the future we can as bad we see a lot of uh virtual objects which are projecting in our environments with uh, some you know, of this technology over there. Okay, so I think that I'm running out of time. I maybe have another 15 minutes. So I just get quickly uh, show you some of these user interactivities. So user interactivity is very important. So uh, that actually enable you to interact with the virtual contents and uh, 
So there's a uh, multiple way, you know, there's many ways of, uh, of interaction, right? Of course, we believe that the most natural way is to use your natural uh, user interface, like your hand or some of your EEG or some of the signal that we can use from your body, right? So, there, but of course, there are also something which is not natural things. So basically you can, for example, people invade some smart skin. So you can post some kind of thing on your skin and then you can, you can operate with your, your device. And there's also some uh, smart test tire as well that will also enable you to interact with the, your, 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 your device, okay? So uh, there are a lot of work already done on this uh, mixed reality or uh, interaction solution. So some of them actually involve on a lot of your, your body, like your hand, your fingers, of, of course, you know, uh, there are also something actually, the basic information you may ask is actually even how would you enter tests in the virtual, in the metaverse, right? So how you type, you don't have a physical keyboard, right? You don't have a physical keyboard or you do have a physical keyboard, but you don't see it, right? Because you are, you are high from the, key, the, 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 the reality. So how do you type actually? This is a very basic question, right? As uh, how do you type in the, in the metaverse? So it's not an uh, easy solution uh, or even an AR, right? So I give you, I said, you can, you can do typing. I give you a virtual keyboard, you know, I will displace a, a virtual keyboard in front of you and you type on them, right? But this is still, uh, it's a, a tricky issue is that the virtual keyboard can be very big. You know, later I show you that the, your field of view is very small, right? But the virtual keyboard can be very big, you know, it's already high half of your field of view. Basically, you don't see the real world so much, right? You may have some safety issue as well. You work on this with the virtual keyboard, you know, just this way. So we have actually, this is our work. So just demonstrate you actually uh, how, how, how we do this. So this actually is uh, allow you to type on the uh, on VR or AR environment without a keyboard, okay? So, uh, so basically, the, we embed the keyboard into the uh, into the line, and actually, and you move the, uh, your hand to different location on your field of view, and it will correspond in the different uh, characters, right? So maybe from this one, we will correct to A to C to E, and then you then further select them, right? So you can uh, actually you can type operates, uh, you know, uh, without actually seeing the keyboard. Uh, uh, over there, so you, you can you can do this kind of typing, so uh, without you know something to hide your your view. You will saw with the virtual keyboard, right? The virtual keyboard may cover half of this uh, uh, this uh, display already. So basically, you don't see much in the uh, in the in the reality. Okay, and then there's some other things that we make uh, uh, like to control, you know, you use what you just to uh, one hand to control these uh, interest with the, the drones. So basically some we use some force sensor. So you put some force sensor over there and then also with the move, mo uh, motion sensor that actually you can just use one hand to control the, uh, the you know, uh, the rotates and uh, you know up and down and uh, with different forces level of forces actually you can uh, you can interact with this and then this is another demo actually uh, just to make not not so boring uh, just I talking so basically you can see the student what he is doing he actually you can see from he's wearing a a, a gua gas let's say like us. So what he's doing is uh, using his hand and to move an uh, object or move from one, one file to one computer and then uh, drive it to another computer, okay? And the file is transferred over there, right? So it's uh, provide a way for you to interact with the, your, your, your equipment. And this another student, she is moving something. And what she's moving is you can see that there's some projector over there, right? So she's moving the uh, PPT PowerPoint and then uh, she, she moves it to the projector, okay? And once you dropped the uh, the file, you just display over there. So this is just to demonstrate some some ways that you can interact with the, your your virtual contents over there. And then there's also issues about, as I mentioned, about the field view. That basically, the uh, if you are wearing a headset, the, your field view is pretty small. Okay, so you don't see a lot of things. You know, you you only see uh, you know compared to human field view, we have actually pretty big ones. Also, not although not as big as the cats, the cat have a much bigger uh, field of view, but you know, as human, we still have pretty uh, big uh, field of view, but we, you, know, you put on all these headsets, 
your field view is get smaller than you know a 60 degree okay so you only see 60 degree of your, your you know in front of you right and I wish uh, also some issue about you know uh, allow uh, adjustments about enter the test entering or some other stuff right that you know the field of view can be uh, equivalent to just you know 25 inch display which is 240 2.4 meter away from you, right? So you can see that it's pretty small. Okay. The the first uh, general the first generation of the Hololens is only 30 times 17 degree. You know, so you know basically what does mean? It means that like you have a 15 inch display which is the 60 uh, 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 centimeter away from you. Okay. So you know basically you have very limited uh, field view. And then the limited field of view actually affect a lot of stuff, like about enter, about interaction. Actually, you also have an influence the, the content you can display, right? That you know you can this you cannot display so many contents, right? But then then all these contents you're going to cover your, your your physical wall, right? Then you may you may got into some dangerous thing, right? So the personalization again, you you remember this chart that this picture I saw that personalization play again play an important uh, uh, role here. So because what I see. Can be different. Uh, of course, you know most of the time it's different from what you see, right? Because I can only afford to display maybe three items on the uh, on this pay, right? So I have to display things to be uh, very personalized to you. Okay. So uh, yeah. So then there's uh, the you have to carefully decide the visual AR object to the users inside a small size display. Then there's also some feedback cool. So you, you need the feedback, right? So, you know, if you touch the real thing, like right? you touch, you, you hold the phone, you have the touch, you feel that you are touching something, right? But the digital content inside the metaverse, they're untouchable, right? You don't feel, you just a uh, virtual things. They're not some sort of stuff. So uh, you, you, then you actually lost some of these uh, experience that you, you're supposed to have. Like even the typing, you type on a virtual keyboard, right? Then if you don't have some kind of haptic feedback, actually your typing speed can be much slower than you are typing on a keyboard which have a haptic speed. Okay, so then uh, people have to use trying to use you know some uh, cheap robot, a low cost robot, or some drone. Actually, they are trying to use this to uh, to to emulate the, the the you know this touch or feedback uh, for the users, right? So. Uh, but since we don't have enough time, so I'm not going so much detail. So if you are really interested into going about the haptic, so we have also a, a survey paper just published uh, last month, uh, October 2021, uh, on uh, a survey on haptic technology for mobile augmented reality. Okay, so, so it's interesting thing is actually this uh, this paper was actually written uh, in 2016, so uh, was actually from Carlos. So uh, PhD uh, qualified SM and uh, Professor Chi was also one of the committee member. So it actually took five years to be published. And uh, at the time he just did his PQ in and now he's a postdoc. So, so uh, he just waiting for his whole PhD to get this paper published. Uh, okay, then uh, then there's uh, telepresencing as well. That uh, uh, So you can, uh, in this one, like you can, you want to have some telepresence uh, across the internet, right? The challenge issue, of course, it might to be able to see your friends, especially now, right? That we have we have locked down by the pandemic, right? Be able to see your friends and touch them, or even see your dogs in the uh, in other country. But then the challenge is uh, that then this, uh, you need kind of uh, extremely low latency. So this is called tactile internet. So you have the low latency, or you know, you know, in order to trans be able to transmit touch. Okay, so touch is something very different from the other kind of, you know, um, same thing. So you need the touch, it require a latency of less than, uh, or, you know, around one millisecond. Okay, so at the moment, you know, definitely not, internet is not be able to transmit this, uh, uh, this touch feeling, right? But, you know, but you know, if you want to be achieve this, you need to have the uh, one media, uh, okay, so I think I don't have uh, time, so uh, I just, Five minutes, five more minutes. I just quickly go through the slide with you, and then you can actually, if you have download my slide, uh, both Chinese version and English version, you can read them. That's the uh, pretty uh, straightforward to read. Okay, so there's internet, the IoT technology. So basically, about you know, using you know whether we, we can actually 
uh, how to integrate this uh, IoT and uh, produce some multimodal interactions in the metaverse. So basically allow you to, meta, to better interact with the environments about, about the virtual environment and the, the real environments. And some of these uh, actually the metaverse also provide a nice way for you to interact with the, some the IoT device as well, because for IoT device usually they don't have a, a display. So then actually you can uh, have a virtual display for you to interact with them. And then the connected vehicle that when, you know, when the uh, cars have more and more sensors and, you know, people may need to spend a lot of time on a daily commute. And the, the, the connected vehicle can be also part, will definitely be integrated into part of the metaverse as well uh, with augmented driving. Uh, so this is a picture from Nissan. They have this, uh, they are vision about how to integrate the digital twin and metaverse and also the, uh, the vehicle together into this, uh, to improve a better driving experience of the, uh, for the users. And then the robots, then the robot will believe that, you know, in the future that we, you need to have a much more interaction with the robot and the metaverse actually is a, a nice environment to train you, to let you to interact with the robot earlier to get you, uh, help you to, uh, to improve the uh, user's profession and uh, collaboration with the robots, okay? And AI, the AI part is more about Digital twins. So you do read them uh, slide. You can you can you, you can see that you know the uh, basically it's about the difference between uh, the digital model, or digital you know, shadow, and digital twin, right? So digital twin is uh, you can see here easily that you know it, it allow you the, the data to fall from the physical object to the digital object, and also digital object to fall back to physical object. So basically, being used. Uh, today for some uh, some prototype and production, right? So you, you prototype something and you build a digital twin model in the in the in the in the digital world, and you do a lot of simulation with this digital model. You generate data, AI uh, generate data, and then use data to come back to the to the physical object to improve the the prototyping, right? And then mo digital model is just a model. There's no connection between the physical and digital one. It's just a model, right? And the digital shadow though, is that you know you, the, the physical object change, the digital object change, but there's no interaction between uh, the digital object is not going to affect the uh, the, uh, the 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 uh, you know the physical object over there. So I just described already here that you know you can you can use this uh, digital chain to enable a lot of healthcare uh, thing as well, like uh, you know simulating operation, and then there's also some uh, you know. Uh, Control a game, uh, thing like that. How you uh, use this uh, reinforcement learning to do uh, better, you know, um, intelligent uh, avatar in the in in the uh, in the metaverse, right? So make the avatar which can be uh, automated, right? So you have watched this movie uh, Matrix, you know that the uh, this there's the, this Agent Smith, right? So Agent Smith actually is uh, is an agent, right? So it's not a, a human avatar that part over there. He's he's an agent. He's a uh, you know, automatic avatar. So how, uh, whether you want to make this automatic avatar smart or intelligent or not, right? So, you know, depend on what you want to do. But I think in the future, the some of these automated avatars should also be very smart in order to be able to spot some of these uh, privacy or security issues in this uh, metaverse. Okay. And uh, blockchain technology, there's uh, one thing I just want to mention is about the uh, ownership. On the in the metaverse, so ownership is very important for the virtual economy. So who own what object in this the metaverse, right? So then, crypt, uh, blockchain is is a, is a very fundamental step for this. So if you uh if you guys have been playing with the NFT, you know that uh, you can you know this picture can cost can maybe uh, uh you know three hundred thousand uh, Hong Kong dollars just just this pixel, right? is the value, you know, you can just uh, copy and paste this, but the value is about the ownership, who own this, right? So then the, uh, you need this, uh, this thing to, to do the ownership and then you also have the decentralized finance. You also have to do with the uh, government, who is going to govern, who is going to control, who is going to, uh, you know, uh, make the rules or those rules actually have to be written to something, right? That, uh, of course, the people may not want a central government, so they want things to be uh, decentralized, but then decentralized, then you need uh, kind of blockchain technology as well, okay? 
Uh, then uh, computer vision, since I'm not a computer vision expert, so I just skip the computer vision part and you can, uh, I, actually I already mentioned that you need a lot of uh, recognition things, okay? So then the uh, important thing is that uh, there's a lot of this computer vision, they're heavy, right? I'm not, I didn't go through the detail with you, but they're heavy, they're heavy. They cannot be actually processed on your device. And uh, so there's uh, 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 the AR pipeline here that, you know, uh, you, you, you just want to know more detail, right? So there's the uh, whole pipeline of how the augmented reality uh, is processed, right? So you have this, uh, Basically, the uh, image coming from your phone as an image frame, and then you have you have to do some kind of object detection and feature extraction. You know, you detect the object and select some of the property, or we call feature from this object, and then you do you recognize the object, whether it's a cat, whether it's a dog, whether it's a car, whether it's a human, right? So you do this recognition, and then you match with the some of this template in your data uh, in, in your in your basically the pose. Uh, you retrieve this uh, the object from the database and then you do some temporary matching and then you do uh, you render these things. So this is a whole pipeline or, or, or technical uh, working over here. Right? So all these things actually uh, pretty expensive, but you can see the object recognition take half seconds to, to operate if you do it on the smartphone, right? So, uh, but if you do it on the a server near you, it take like, maybe less than 90 milliseconds. So it's just a simple run to show you, right? So then the end-to-end -end latency in this AR is can be uh, it can be break down into a different part, right? That it can be a break down into uh, object recognition, you know, network part. So uh, you believe, some people tell you that, you know, the 5G is going to enable the metaverse. Okay, or the 6G is going to come enable the metaverse, which is uh, it's not really tell you the, the, the full story. If you look at the, the network transfer part, right, it's only around, uh, if you count about the end-to-end -end latency, it's around 18% uh, of the end-to-end -end latency. So I just even re remove, like reduce the network transfer latency, I only save 20%, okay? So all other things about, about processing, about, uh, for example, object recognition, you know, of course you can do faster, right? So, but it's just a typical one I show you. It take around 33% of the time that your latency because you're doing object recognition. 70% is because you're doing a feature extraction. You extract the feature from the, this thing, right? So the network actually can help, but it only have less than 20% uh, of your, your task, right? So if you want to uh, make a low latency things, you need to do uh, edge computing or uh, cloud computing to reduce all this uh, latency over there. So lastly, uh, the AR also the the VR challenge that uh, that we also uh, I want to highlight to you that uh, the current VR you know uh, so they say that you you want to have a good experience about VR to the users right so we have three hundred sixty degree video allow you to watch at different uh, directions okay. So, uh, but you know what are the challenge over there right? The human you are human you are with the normal eyesight that you want to have a natural view, you need a 3,600 3, pixel within one degree area, okay? Otherwise you will see blur. Otherwise you may do, because you put the headset is so, so close to your eye, right? So you can see brain images, okay? So if you also want to see the natural image as you see in your physical world, you need 3,600 pixel within one degree area. So for 600, uh, 660, 360 degree video, you need 16K, okay, 16K resolution. And I tell you that 16K, if you stream 16K video, it will about, you need a bit like about 300 megabit per second, okay? So it's not doable with the, your 5G as well, right? Uh, it will be doable with your, uh, uh, your, your, your uh, other stuff, but it's not with the, this, uh, not with the, this uh, 5G, right? And uh, even if you be able to stream them down, you, 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 can, you can do three, 300 megabit per second, but I'm telling you, your phone cannot decode them. You know, you, your phone cannot decode them. The state of the art phone cannot, uh, smartphone cannot decode 16K. Actually, your, uh, even your state of the art GPU you buy from NVIDIA, one GPU also cannot decode uh, the 16K video, right? So you have, you need to invent some, uh, edge computing uh, technology uh, to, uh, to to solve this, okay? 
to uh, uh, yeah, okay. So, uh, so Professor Chi, should I stop and uh, wait for question, or I should continue? Yeah, I think is uh, you can ramp up your talk and you see whether in a few minutes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then I, I run up in in a few minutes and then wait wait for questions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So these are the uh, the things. So I'm not going uh, more detail. I just tell you that we need edge and uh, and cloud computing to in order to solve these issues. And uh, if you are also into into the uh, implementation of AI on the edge, you know, we also have a paper just uh, you know published this month, uh, which is on the uh, uh, proceeding I should be cover so you also have 16 uh, pages if you are uh, into how this can be implemented okay so I skip the network part because as, as I just mentioned that in the network the latency is very important it can cause you uh, some kind of sickness we call it motion sickness if the latency between your head movement and the update and the VR is too, 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 too heavy too low too. so these are some issues okay and then actually I don't have time to cover the uh, ecosystem. Okay, so the eco ecosystem is also as important as the, uh, the, uh, the uh, technology system. Okay, so basically you have to, to cover about how you generate the avatar, right? How the avatar can be so, so acceptable, how the avatar, you know, uh, can, read, you know, can uh, express, can have some micro expression of your face so people can read you. Okay, and also the uh, there are some issues about how these uh, avatars behavior can be used to uh, infer your behavior, uh, the your users uh, leakage from this stuff, right? And then the con content creation as well. That uh, how what contents can be created, how a human and AI can collaborate to do the co uh, collaborations, and virtual economic as well. That how can we cre create this economic in the metaverse, which can allow everybody to. Uh, uh, to, to sustain uh, without uh, only uh, uh, oligopolis, uh, uh, oligo, uh, police, uh market, right? That only a few big guys controlling the whole market. So the commerce is big, uh, as the JP uh, Morgan Stanley says, eight uh, trillion uh, US dollars. So how we maintain these uh, things? And then there's also social sustainability issues. People talk about. Facebook changing the name to Meta because they have some issues about uh, you know how they deal with the, the privacy. So how actually when we invent these new new things, how can we actually protect the users' privacy uh, uh, better? And there's fairness issues. How can we reduce uh, uh, user addictions? One thing is that uh, your virtual uh, your avatar can live in the metaverse forever, right? So then you have these uh, virtual in the mortality issues as well. Uh, which have been covered everywhere. Privacy security. So for the privacy security part, I am not. I, I cannot give you answers. So many ask you questions. You know, you can you look at the slide. How can uh, how can you protect the users' uh, privacy? If some people pretend to be a, a rubbish bear and uh, listening to what you uh, you're talking with another avatar, so you don't know, right? They can just get all your information. And how we do with the ethical design issues, biological data trust, etc, uh, etc. Et okay, so I'm, uh, I think I'm stopped here. And I'm going to ready to take question. I we can see that uh, Professor Nee.